Hello everyone, Daniel here today, and we're going to be doing a special type of video today. We're going to be doing a pre-update video. We're going to be showing off Dark Rider and Arcane Caster Enlightenment, Divine, and we're going to be showing the new feature, the Guild United, on the screen. We'll go ahead and show the various pictures that are in this update. And right now, we're going to go ahead and start off with the Dark Rider. We're going to go ahead and show how much he has improved. And to start off, we're going to go ahead and look at his skill. Alright, and to start off, at level 30, it increases the attack and damage reduction by 2,060% respectively. So basically, it increases the attack of the Dark Rider by 2,000, which isn't really that important. But it increases the damage reduction by 60%. So it makes him live a lot longer. In addition to that, just like the Woven Fiend, it converts 50% damage taken to HP. So basically, if you do 10,000 damage, it'll basically recover 5,000 uh, HP to itself. It doesn't exactly do healing, so I don't know if that would be considered a buff or anything that could be negated. But I do see that on there, for 50% damage taken as HP, that will help him live a lot longer, and it'll be a little bit harder to kill. Um, Dark Rider may actually be a mainstay in Guild Clash now, especially if you can upgrade his skill to the max level. Alright, and now we're going to go ahead and look at his Fortitude. It increases the Town Hall HP by 400%, so basically times it by 5, because it increases it by 400%, so it multiplies it by 5, so 5 times the Town Hall HP in Guild Clash is quite extensive. Um, in addition to that, it also increases the armor of the Town Hall by 200%, so it triples the armor as well. When you do actually manage to get through all that armor and go ahead and destroy it, everything around the Town Hall will be stunned for 8 seconds and lose 54% of their HP. They will lose over half of their HP just for breaking that armor. So if you have a bunch of victory statues next to it, or if you have a bunch of heroes attacking the other heroes, they will go down very, very quickly. Alright, and now we are on his divine. All right, when he does activate his divine, he does get 320,000 HP, and that shield does last for 30 seconds. So if you don't manage to kill Dark Rider for 30 seconds, it will go away. That'd be kind of unlikely. Uh, when the shield is active, it reduces damage by 40%, so that comboed with the skill, if the skill touches the shield, it'll go ahead and make it, the shield really hard to kill. If not, it only does 40%. When the shield is broken, it does deal 100,000 damage to all the surrounding enemies, and causes stun for 7 seconds to the surrounding enemies as well. In addition, all the enemy heroes deal 30% less damage for 20 seconds. And that's basically for the surrounding heroes only. It's not for all of them. Okay, when you do manage to go ahead and actually break through that shield, you are going to go ahead and do less damage for 20 seconds, which is quite a long time in Guild Clash, especially towards the end of it. Alright, and now we're on his insight. For his insight, it's basically when the battle starts, as well as activating his skill, it casts a shield for all the friendly allied heroes, basically for all your whole team, which reflects 50% of skill damage taken, so they only take half of the skill damage. It also has a 90% chance to add a shield to a random friendly hero every 3 seconds, which is really, really good, because basically it's going to be staying alive for more than 3 seconds, Basically, you're going to get at least two shields if you use Berserker A's. But even with using Berserker A's, you are going to go ahead and get multiple shields on your heroes, which are going to make them last a quite a bit, quite a bit longer. Um, especially if one of those shields goes on an enlightened landslide with a dragon heart. That thing is not going to die. I'm going to tell you straight up. That thing is not going to die. Alright, and now we're on Arcane Caster, and at max level skill for level 30 skill, for 8 seconds, she has a 100% chance to steal random buffs, so it's not close to the 100% anymore, it is actually 100%, 
to steal random buffs from the two nearest heroes instead of just one. So I'm thinking that she actually activates those two purple bars from the sky instead of just one. But it does steal random buffs from the two nearest heroes. It deals 640% attack damage to them, which is insane how it deals so much damage to them in one skill. It also resets the cooldown timer for those heroes. I'm thinking that she will be really crucial in Colosseum when you put her on the first lineup. Especially since a lot of people, at least around my skill level and around the people I face, they always use Great Sage in the beginning. So if you're able to go ahead and use Arcane Caster once you become unlocked from their Great Sage, they'll go ahead and be able to not be able to use their skills for quite a long time. And you'll be able to go ahead and just kill those first three heroes, which is really nice. It also pairs well with putting her on defense, especially against heroes like Toxic Shaman and Abyss Demon. It really helps against that, going ahead and killing them, not letting them live anymore. But right now, we're going to go ahead and check out Arcane Caster's Fortitude. On her Fortitude, it increases damage of all defensive buildings by 50%, which is a pretty good amount. If Arcane Caster loses 30% of her HP in 5 seconds, it instantly activates her Divine. Arcane Caster, like normal, can't use her Divine under any circumstance other than actually having her lose 30% HP in 5 seconds. But if she does, she instantly activates it. Doesn't matter if she's locked or not. Personally, I don't think that's much of an improvement. I don't think you really have to get Arcane Caster with Fortitude 5. It's not really that much of an improvement in my opinion. In my opinion, I don't think her Fortitude 5 is that important. It doesn't really provide that much of a boost. Over the other heroes, Fortitude 5, I mean, certainly it is a boost. And if you have an open wallet, you can go ahead and do that. But in my opinion, I would not go ahead and invest into Arcane Caster just purely for her fortitude. And now we're on to Arcane Caster's Divine. And let me just tell you, people are going to be getting over 200 million once they get this. People are going to be getting over 200 million in Guild Boss for Ether Ogre. And probably over 100 million for the other two. But anyways, for her Divine 5, it reflects 90% of the damage taken to the attacker or attackers for 18 seconds. Also, it increases the damage of all allied heroes by 70%. So not only is she going to be reflecting a lot more damage, but all the allied heroes that you've taken with you are going to be doing a lot more damage as well. After her divine finishes, if their target is still alive, which Guild Boss is going to be, stun them for 8 seconds. Um, Guild Boss can't be stunned, of course. But it stuns him for 8 seconds, and she becomes invincible for 18 seconds. So on top of basically having all the damage you deal to her being reflected back to you, she's also going to go ahead and become invincible after that time. So if you don't manage to kill her within 18 seconds, you're pretty much boned, because she'll use her skill against you to go ahead and take your Pangoli aid away, to go ahead and take a whole bunch of things away from you and kill you. Alright, and now we are on Arcane Caster's Insight. While she is still alive, she produces two enemy heroes with the highest damage for 80% of their skill damage. For 80% of their skill damage, guys. 80%. That's insane. But all other heroes' damage are reduced by 30%. So two of your heroes in Guild Clash are going to be doing only 20% of the original damage that they would have done. And the other three heroes that you have. Are going to be doing 70% damage. That they would have done before. Which comboed with a Dark Rider. Is going to make it a pain. To go ahead and try to win in Go Clash. It's going to make it so difficult. I can already tell you guys. Um, every 5 seconds. It also steals 2 buffs. And then add them to one random allied hero. So instead of just one, it adds two of them, and it adds every five seconds. So basically, by the time you get to her, all of your heroes will have all of their buffs removed, which is insane. Wow, this update is kind of crazy. But we do have one last thing to show for this update, and that would be the Guild United feature. 
as you can see, it has a lot of things on the screen. Basically, there are a few requirements for the Guild Unite system. The first one is you do have to have a guild level at least level 2. You can't have a level 1 guild. You have to upgrade it at least to level 2. The, another requirement is you have to have at least 5 members in your guild. So that's basically not too bad. Uh, you can't just create a guild and then get the guild united. You do have to have five people with you or four other people with you so five people total and the last requirement is more than three people so three people or more have to log in within the last seven days and that'll allow you to go ahead and access skills united one thing i like is that it doesn't require like all the people to go ahead and log in within the last seven days because that really hurts some of the lower level guilds but Anyways, when this does start, your guild will automatically get four different quests, which need to be finished by the whole guild. Once you do, you gain honor and fame points, which, when finished, every single person in your guild will get personal honor or fame points based on their participation percent. So basically, the more you do, the more you'll actually get, which is really, really nice. Um, when a quest is finished, a new quest will come to go ahead and replace it after a certain amount of time, just like the quest for the guild credits. After you go ahead and host one of those, after a little bit of time, they'll go ahead and have another one come in. If for some reason that you can't get that one completed in time, or if it's too difficult, or you just don't want to go ahead and do it, the guild leader can actually go ahead and choose to give up that quest, and the new quest will go ahead and activate later. But it does have a dual requirement. I don't actually know what that jewel requirement is, but it does have a jewel requirement. When your guild honor or fame reaches the next level, every single guild member that has more than one honor or fame, so you have to at least do something, at least as long as you get one point, you'll get an extra reward. All those rewards, though, you won't get them automatically. You will have to get them after the event ends. So basically, it's like Guild Class, you can't just get it automatically, you do have to wait until it ends. But, that is going to go ahead and conclude this video. I just wanted to go ahead and get this out for you guys. I did go ahead and translate what those pictures say, so you could actually read it. One thing I did want to say, is the original pictures with the original language were not received by me. I do have to go ahead and give huge props to Dare to Win, which is an iOS player on the Clash of Lords 2 servers. They went ahead and gave me the original pictures with the original language text. I just went ahead and put the English words on the pictures. But that's going to go ahead and include this video. If you do want to see a future video, go ahead and leave that in the comments down below. But my name is Daniel, and see you in the next video.